All right, if you have a wire feed set up uh, that needs to be hooked up, um, there are several things you have to check. So in this series, we're going to look at those things. Uh, step number one is going to be to basically make your connections. What I have here is a uh, feeder set up. The feeder itself <clears throat> is uh, not hooked up. Uh, in this case, I have a, a harness. I have quick disconnect uh, fittings right here. So we're gonna go ahead and hook those up and we're gonna get our power connection set up to the machine. Um, it's not real rocket science, folks. Um, first thing you wanna do is give your equipment a good general inspection. So I'm gonna make my way around the back side here. Um, I have a control cable. I wanna make sure that this is in good condition. I have the power cable. Again, I wanna make sure that's in good condition. On the other end of the power cable, since I can access it, I wanna make sure that this is tight. Um, you know, give this a, a, a feel. You don't have to necessarily put a wrench on it, but certainly if this is loose, uh, this nut wants to be tightened down. It's an electrical connection. It's important that it's secure. This is my gas connection. Uh, this particular machine I have, uh, the gas line is uh, connected uh, hard on the back end. And if I follow the leads out, around and around here I get to the other end and I have the the business end of these connections so to speak so again my gas connection is here this is an Eaton Hansen 600 series oxygen fitting uh, it's what they use at Bath Iron Works so it's what I have here at the school I have my 14 pin albeit only three are actually used in this setup but my standard Miller 14 pin connection I want to make sure that this part turns free and I want to make sure that all of the screws are present, that nothing is broken. And I want to make sure that this part right here where my thumb is, the basket, the lower part does not turn. Okay. If that part is loose at all, it needs to be carefully snugged down uh, because if this part turns, it will actually rotate uh, against the pins on the inside and it will shear the wires off. So only the outer part should ever be rotated. And then finally, I have my DINs connection. Uh, again, I want to make sure that this is tight, nothing's loose, look at the cables, look for frays and cracks, and make sure that the lug on the cam is, in fact, present and clean. So hooking these things up is relatively simple. I'm going to hook up, let's get the hand out of the way. I'm going to hook up the uh, DINs connector first for flux core. That is gonna go in the positive side 95 times out of 100 um, in, in my uh, estimation. If you're running a wire that uses shielding gas, uh, it goes into the positive. But again, make sure that you're connecting it correctly. Some wire, in fact, requires electrode negative. So this is the side that goes to the feeder. The MIG gun hooks in here, so ultimately the wire, which is the electrode, is what's connected. So this needs to be plugged in, not like this, okay, but all the way in, and then it needs to rotate until it's tight, okay? We want to make sure those connections are tight. The control cable, which I have here, is a, a really light-duty plug, okay? This essentially, once it's pushed into the socket, it's plugged in. All right, this does not have to be tightened down in order to be plugged in, but we don't want it falling out, okay? So basically, we're gonna hook that in. Uh, there's an alignment pin, uh, which is right at the top, a little notch there, and there's a slot here, okay? So those have to line up. Don't push hard, give it just a little bit of a wiggle and turn only the outside of this basket. Um, it'll turn, as I'm gonna turn it here, quite a ways in. But again, it's not necessary to make it any tighter. Locking this down tight has nothing to do with the electrical connections on the inside. And as I mentioned before, never rotate this part. It will just twist the wires off from the cable. Okay, the gas line we're gonna get to later. We're gonna cover gas hookup separately, but right now, just electrical connections. The next thing to check is, in fact, the ground. I mentioned this in the previous video. But again, we're gonna take a look at the ground connection. We wanna make sure that the ground is rated for the amperage that we're using. Um, in this case, 
And if I roll this around, I do not have a ground clamp uh, rating marked on this. It's apparent, uh, but if I look carefully, I have the model, okay? I have a Lenco EG500. If you look that up uh, online, you'll discover this is actually a 500 amp rated ground clamp. So this ground clamp certainly has the ratings for the work that we're doing, but it's only rated for that work if everything is good. So check this connection, make sure this is loose, or make sure it's not loose, I should say. Make sure it's not loose, and make sure that all of these connections through are tight. You wanna make sure that the spring is stout. Uh, this should require considerable effort to open and close, and there is a weaved cable on the inside that goes from the copper lug around, if I can roll this with the camera at the same time, it makes it all the way around and ultimately connects to the bottom part, okay? And you can see it right in here if I get the light just right, okay? You wanna make sure that is intact. So that's very, very important. Uh, uh, Mike Covert from Maine Oxy, who comes in and does welding safety training with us every year, uh, tells a story of a young man who was killed, uh, electrocuted to death, fried in fact, all because of a bad ground clamp. That's the part that killed him, right? So make sure that that's good. Without that, the electricity goes wherever it wants to go to get back to the machine. On the other end, uh, again, we have another cam lock connection, or a, and this is a DINs connector, but a cam, cam locking style. Again, give it a good look. And again, I'm gonna plug this in. I wanna make sure that this goes all the way in and rolls in locks, okay? Polarity is important to check. Uh, in this case, we're gonna be running uh, standard MIG wire or we could run uh, gas shielded flux core. So again, electrode is on the positive, the ground clamp is on the negative, but don't assume it's always that way, okay? So once those connections are made and we've verified that everything's tight, we're gonna go ahead and plug the machine in. Now this machine uh, happens to use a 480 volt three phase connector. So this connector will only go in one way. Um, there's a copper grounding uh, bar on the outside. There's also uh, a couple of uh, little spots on the outside of this where there's like a, a bump, okay? And that aligns with the bump on the male side of the plug. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hook this connector up. Okay, the other end of this plug, this particular plug, the female side uh, is again right here. So again, these will go together. Uh, I can either align the copper uh, grounding plates up. If I get these in view of the camera, I can line the copper grounding plates up. Or again, I can look for the notches. But again, we shouldn't have to force this plug. It will not go together, okay, no matter how hard I push, until it has been rotated into battery. At that point, it simply goes together easily. And a little bit of a wiggle, make sure that this uh, plastic little notch is lined up with the hole and we twist it. So again, this goes together with uh, a simple twisting action. And it's hard for me to film this and have the camera between me, so I apologize. But basically, we wanna make sure that that is tight all the way, okay? So that's our 480 volt connection. All right, folks, we got power. We have all of our electrical connections are hooked up. So in theory, we're ready to uh, turn this thing on and make sure it's actually working. I'm gonna open the lid, make sure that I'm on MIG mode, um, which is the correct mode for what we're gonna ultimately be doing. And then I'm gonna flip power. If everything's connected, the machine should cycle up. They'll go through a couple of screen changes and then ultimately it will say, uh, 24.5, which is just the voltage that the machine is set on. So everything is up and running. Uh, these particular machines, I don't know if you can hear it, they make a little uh, clicking, singing, musical, weird noise. That's perfectly normal. Um, so don't worry about it. Okay. So next step, next video, we'll start hooking up the wire and the drive rolls.